I'm the best! The best! We're diving into those unforgettable moments when poker bluffs go horribly wrong. We've all seen it. Players pushing all their chips into the middle, selling a story that just doesn't add up, or when their opponent is holding the nuts. These are the bluffs that backfired spectacularly, leaving some players walking away with shattered egos and empty pockets. When Fearless meets Fate. In our first clip, we're looking at Victor Blum, a relentless online sensation known for his fearless bluffs. Sitting at day three of the WSOP Europe main event, Victor's reputation is well established, but this time it might just work against him. His opponent starts with an incredible hand, but by the end, he has to make a tough decision with total air. Government just like. We, we've spotted the tanker, chat. We've spotted the tanker. Red Mist said, Poker Room Kings, good afternoon, sir, and thank you for the great coverage. Red Misty, welcome to the stream. I, I understand, like, tanking and whatnot in marginal decisions, but the tanking with, uh, oh boy. Poker City now saying, hi, Henry, great job as per usual. Keep our greetings. Peter from Poker City. Our Dutch commentary for Kings every now and then. Shout out Poker City and now shout out to all the Dutch community members. A lot of love for the Dutchies. They've uh, been a big support. The flop rolls out and Victor likely thinks he struck gold. In his mind, the board looks ripe for a bluff, but he's unaware that his opponent is holding a royal flush draw, something you can't scare off with aggressive betting. The years as we dive back into this, ladies and gentlemen, the club finds its way to the river. Could be losing a true legend of the game very quickly here on day three. Brings on the turn, 72k in the middle. I'm gonna slow down, comes with B50. Every combo of King-10 suited and King-10 offsuit, and then I guess every combo of 10-8 suited from the cutoff as well as set advantages on this board. But Victor, gonna attack this smaller sizing. Did feel like a an attackable size B50 on this turn card. Takes it north to 147. Blum continues to crank up the pressure, but here's the thing. When someone is staring down the barrel of a potential royal flush, folding just isn't on the table. His timing couldn't be worse. Up on this, we don't want to be half pointing a lot, but again, zero, zero authority from me in the booth here. Just felt like a natural big size or a check. Open does make the call. 366 in the middle. Brick rolls off and Victor Blom with the slap jam on the river with eight high. Says this all there, ladies and gentlemen. Blocking 10 8 suited. I guess is nice. Has taken this long with this decision here. Now Bloom is all in, and his opponent is left pondering a call with nothing more than ace high. All the cards are out in the open. Now it is up to fate. Note the shift in body language from Victor as well, an immediate smirk on his face. The last thing you want to hear from your opponent when you're sat there with eight high is 10-5 of diamonds or something like this, the soul read. If he makes this call, am I allowed to go out there and just give him a hug? Am I allowed to do that? He makes the call, ladies and gentlemen, with ace high. Hand number 13. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Number Good luck. one on Turkey's all-time money list. What did I just witness, chat? And there it is. Victor Blum gets knocked out, bluffing all the way. In any other circumstance, this bluff would have been masterful, but his reputation as a dangerous bluffer clearly preceded him. His opponent's fearless call with ace high proves that even a world-class bluff can backfire spectacularly. If you never want to miss out on the biggest poker fails, sickest suckouts, and legendary wins, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Don't try to bluff the best.
in our next epic clash, we're about to see exactly why you need to think twice before bluffing one of the best in the world. Leon goes head to head with poker legend Bryn Kenny, who has racked up over $67 million in tournament earnings, making him one of the most successful poker pros of all time. As the hand unfolds, we're reminded that in poker, who you choose to bluff and when can make or break you. I was like another orbit away from starting 5x. I, mean, I thought that was what thought that was what we we're meant to be doing. Now. <laughs> well, here's a bit of action. Leon raising under the gun, king five suited, and Bryn, just the aces this time. Yep, Leon's getting a little bit frisky with little king five suited. Don't get me wrong, we all love a bit of king five suited, but maybe under the gun at this table might want to give it a miss. Bryn will three bet. Good. Leon now playing. Well, over 50 big blinds deep. So obviously, if he's a bit, you know, if he's shallow, Bryn might elect to trap with this hand, right? But there's plenty of hands he calls a three bit with and he's raised under the gun. Yeah, I mean, Bryn's also sized up here a bit. It's like an exploit, and you can see, like, right, Leon, so Leon in folded, mate. But, but the, maybe, you know, Leon may not pick up on those, but the other top pros at the table would maybe look at this raise sizing and think, oh, hang on, Bryn's probably got a really good hand here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right now, yeah, for sure. Like, I think this is a, an exploit sizing. Well, he did three bet and a 10 9 4 2 diamond board. Perhaps not the best flop in the world for black aces against an undergun raise and call. You can see, of course, Leon has nothing. I was just saying, like, I know. Leon finds himself with absolutely nothing, while Bryn Kenny holds pocket aces, the ultimate powerhouse hand, and yet Leon tries to bluff. The timing couldn't be worse. Bryn calmly bets 265,000 chips, further solidifying his control over the hand. It's a clear case of what not to do when you're up against a player like Kenny. That's why this is, this is a man who loves the game. Yeah, certainly burning a time chip or two here. There we go, yeah, look. I'm loving this. He's going to get the bad news if he does something, but... You can tell, like, I mean, even though he doesn't play professional, he understands which boards are dangerous for the three bear and stuff, and this is why he's staying in the tank. You know, it's not a hand you should be really in the situation with, but he certainly understands that this 10-9-4, right. you know, it's not it's not an incredible flop for a lot of Bryn's three bearing range. Yeah, yeah. Leon. <laughs> he just wants to take advantage of that. I've just, I've just had the thoughts he's having right now so many times <laughs> myself, so I can recognize it on his face. Well, another time chip for Ryan into the pot. Let's say he does love fighting for pots. Don't do it, Leon. <laughs> we want to keep you around. He's got the aces, mate. Well, look at this. He's counting out as if he might jam. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. Oh, yes. oh, oh he does go on in. Oh. Prince oh, snap oh, calls. No. Oh, no. And Leon will see the bad. Oh. <laughs> that worked out poorly. Leon's chances of winning are a measly 3%. The cards are dealt, and all Leon can do now is leave his fate to the poker gods. With odds like that, you can already feel the tension rise. <laughs> I just, oh, you just know sometimes he's just going to go for it, you know? Oh. He was time chip. He was time time card chip committed. He put half his time cards in. He's got to go for it. He's actually you can't put half your time charts in and not do it. You know. Yeah. Shaking his head. Of course, he can still win. There's some miracle runner runner here. All right, guys, give us a sweat. Ah, oh, oh. come on, give us a little something. And that'll be the end of the. It is still re-entry time though. It is still re-entry. Yep. Yeah, I'm Maybe. sure he'll be back in involved. Maybe that was playing on his mind. Leon's bluff is crushed. Bryn Kenny makes quick work of him, reminding us why he's worth so many millions. Bluffing is an essential skill in poker, but as this hand shows, it's all about knowing when and how to execute it. Timing is everything, and when you go up against a legend like Kenny, you better be prepared for your bluff to potentially backfire. Stay tuned, because our next clip highlights just how important timing truly is. The cost of poor timing. We're back at the WSOP Europe main event, but this time it's heads up play at the final table, where the stakes couldn't be higher. Astore and Eliak are locked in a duel, battling for millions of euros in poker glory. The money is literally on the table, and every move could either make or break them. In situations like this, knowing when to bluff and when to back down is everything.
Three bet part, Eljek has flopped, nut trips. The story gonna continue for just 20% part, obviously Eljek going nowhere. 10 million in the middle already. I know we're playing around 100 effective chat. Just a couple of hands, you never know. Story. I'm gonna continue for half pop. Things aren't looking good for Pastore. Eljak has landed trip sevens, and there's no way he's folding that hand. Eljak isn't going to let go of this pot easily. Before he bet them, we hope Pastore kissed those five million chips goodbye. Fires out a bet, five million into 10 million. The deuce of spades turn. Biggest pot of heads up play. 20 million in the middle. Pastore drawing dead. Does not want to see a spade on the river. A spade rolled off. I have seen Pastore fire for a third time. Unblocking ace high. And he's gonna fire a third barrel, ladies and gentlemen. 20 million in the middle. Pastor, we're practically shouting at the screen. Don't do it. If you try to bluff here, he's going to call. Omar Eljak. Flopping nut trips. With his ace seven of clubs, and he's got the purest of runouts. 24. He comes for the river raise to 24 million. That's brutal, chat. We've all been there running a monster bluff. See, this is just posturing here from Pastore. Huge part. Though Pastore doesn't lose all of his chips in this hand, it's a critical blow to his chances. And guess who ended up winning the tournament? The 1.3 million euro and the WSLP Europe bracelet. Yep, it was Eljack. This is a perfect reminder that mistimed bluffs can be catastrophically costly, even for the best players in the game. Pro versus pro. In this intense hand, we're about to see a high-stakes duel between two of poker's sharpest minds, Patrick Antonius and Charlie Carell. Both players are notorious for their exceptional reads and ice-cold composure, making this hand a master class in psychological warfare. With millions on the line, it's a battle of patience and nerve, where the first one to crack risks losing it all. 80. Um, okay, I shall raise small to 80,000. We really see uh, Charlie Carroll mixing it up from a small blind. It's almost like he wants to make a statement about it. He raised seven to suit it earlier from a small as well. So. <laughs> Peaks over, taking a close look. He's got the talk game going. He's yeah. having fun. Patrick Peel here. How many people do you think is, have ever made a correct decision against Patrick Antonius based on a live read? It's low. <laughs> it's super low. <laughs> Has to be pretty low. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, hmm. Yeah, he's definitely played some live poker. Gets the best of it. Bottom pair for Patrick and position. Yeah, Very important there. Charlie came to play today, mixing it up, got the suit on. Coming at one of the, as you mentioned, legends, old school, been around. Antonius and Karalik are each carefully assessing the other's every move. This isn't just about cards anymore. It's a mental chess game where one misstep could prove fatal. The stakes couldn't be higher, and neither player is willing to back down. 26 or 5, he's a young guy. Probably watched Patrick growing up playing poker, and here he is just ripping in bluffs at the max <laughs> extreme. On Twitch, he streams on Twitch as well. Charlie Carell plays plays high stakes when he does stream. It's been a while, but he he has a Twitch stream. I know that. Yeah, definitely does a lot of cool things uh, and content. Also helping people and uh, yeah. talking a lot of poker. Yep. Really respect that. Yeah, he's done some bankroll challenges and, and 
he definitely is uh, engages the poker community. Very interesting hand going here. <laughs> Patrick's not a guy to want to just like be stone, stone bluffing. He does pick up some equity here, but Charlie, tread carefully. You're up against Antonius, a true poker veteran with the uncanny ability to sniff out weakness from across the table. He's a master of reading people, not just hands, and he's showing no signs of backing off. No. And Krelk sort of waves the white flag here. Does get a free card. And. Once Patrick checks here, he, he really kind of plays his hand face up, but that's fine, you know, you still have position. So I think in uh, in Charlie's mind, Patrick really has a six here, or maybe a weaker nine. Yeah. This is, this is, wow. It does wow. go all in. I like that. No one likes to make at the feature like a hero call, bust out hand. This is Patrick's certainly not afraid, and and if anyone's capable of making a great call, it's it's Patrick. But it's yeah. a tough spot. I really like the bet sizing that Charlie uses here. If if he would have just gone with like a more conventional bet of 150. As the clock ticks down, Antonius faces a pivotal decision with only a pair of sixes, a vulnerable hand that could easily be beaten. Yet his calm demeanor never wavers. All eyes are on him as the room holds its breath, waiting to see if he will make the call of a lifetime. Yeah, this isn't like a 50-50. I mean, this is, this is a complex bluff and spot. And they're deep as well. It's interesting. I mean, they're, this is 117 entered. And they're down to, it's getting close to the money. Yeah, 11 spots away. From today so far, I don't think I've seen anyone use even two time banks. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is certainly not a usual thing. Everyone's played very fast, even you know, pre-flop, flops, turns. There has been no tanking. This is far from a tank. This is a high level hand. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, what a call. Welcome. Well, <laughs> Patrick Antonius. That is a call. It took you so long. <laughs> it took you so long. <laughs> In a stunning move, Antonius makes a brilliant hero call that leaves Carell stunned and speechless. This isn't just about reading cards. It's about understanding your opponent on a deeper level. Carell's bluff completely backfires, proving once again why Antonius is one of the most feared players at the table. In poker, sometimes the toughest and most rewarding decision is knowing when to make that daring call. Would you have the greatest call you ever made? Let us know in the comments below. High Roller Consequences At the WSOP Europe High Roller Final Table, we find Seng and Kim locked in a high-stakes battle for a massive payout. Both players start with marginal hands, but it's a classic case of one player refusing to back down, leading to a collapse of epic proportions. This showdown is a reminder that when you're playing for millions, the line between risk and reward can blur dangerously. I want to shovel it in. That's their prerogative. King 10 suited. Kim limping. What with the ace eight of diamonds. If he comes in the raise, this could be very interesting indeed here. One point seven. One point seven an ounce from Fua. One point seven has been called. Three point nine in the middle. Very important flop about to come down. Foise ace in front right now. Still in front. Kim with a swing and a miss. Does have two overs and the backdoor straight draw working for him. As we welcome back Henry to the booth. Henry, epic heads up battle going on just now. Yeah, apologies for missing the start to this. The some of the production. Kim's in trouble, and it's not looking good. Seng has landed a straight, and while Kim is sitting on a straight draw, his odds aren't looking promising. In a game of patience and precision, Kim just can't seem to let go. Crew, uh, heading home early, calling it a night, because we don't need 16 for heads up. 
We're just going over some final details for tomorrow's cash game, but more on that later as we aye, aye, aye. jump back into this. Cool. While turning the nine high straight, Kim with the two overs and the gut shot. Yeah, Kim with a, an early double, and these two have traded blows Three back and forth since then. Hold that thought. As Kim leads out for 1.5, Flat going to find the raise. I love the way Kim plays. Unbelievably fearless. He's leading. He's playing a, a little on the on, on on the unorthodox side. Mm. It puts his opponents in a world of hurt. Unfortunately for him right now, Fua has the straight. Eight point nine in the middle. Pinks are half mil. No, I think they're two hundred fifty k. Nope, they're half mil. You're absolutely right. My bad. For event number eight is Kim about to do something silly and the answer is yes pops it to 6.5 well 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 the commentators are praising Kim's aggressive play but we've got to question their timing here betting 6.5 million chips with only king high that's a bold move for sure but it seems more reckless than smart at this stage you have to wonder is Kim relying too much on his bluffing power oh. I love the way the guy, this guy plays Rare, I guess is the only thing, or the only word that comes to mind. Rare turn three bet. The four to a straight. Hand number 192. Supermoto John says, I'm an expert when I can see everyone's whole cards. Aren't we all, my friend? Aren't we all? He's made a 9.5! He's four bet the turn. Any turn four bet spots, chat. You kids and you, you your solvers. <laughs> Go solve that one. Solve that, mate. And just like that, Seng takes down a monster pot, while Kim's ill-timed bluff leaves him looking outmatched. Sure, Kim might be a high roller, but in tournaments like this, it takes more than guts to walk away with the bracelet. The WSOP Europe isn't just about having chips. It's about knowing when to risk them. Timing and instinct are everything, and Kim's move here shows just how costly poor judgment can be. Talk the talk, walk the walk. In this explosive hand, we've got Tony G at his absolute finest, trash talking with no filter as he locks horns with Bad Zikowski. The tension escalates quickly as the pot swells past the million euro mark. Tony G, never one to shy away from mind games, starts cranking up the verbal warfare. But when one player decides to pull off a bluff, things quickly get heated. Easy, easy money. <laughs> Twenty-two. And uh, give you a chance to get some refund okay. if you can get lucky. Just move all in. Hold to Tony G. that's <laughs> all. Two, four, six, seven. They want to qualify. Probably do like a big all in hand. Just, it will be cool. Uh, three of us, like, move all in with random hands. As usual, Tony G can't help himself. He's running his mouth, but interestingly, this time he's not directing his taunts at anyone in particular. With three players involved and the pot already climbing to an eye watering 70,000 euro, the stakes are sky high. And with blinds at 10k before the flop, this isn't just a game of cards, it's a battlefield. Very last hand, Tony G with top pair. Gonna fire out. Haxon's got middle pair and Bodzikowski bottom pair. Lose 900. Just one call from Haxton. He has seen Tony G make a lot of bluffs, random stabs. So there's a chance he thinks his seven is good occasionally. As long as Haxton's got some straight draws. He's going to continue as well. He's got position.
plate blank. Each of the three contenders has picked up a pair, but none have a hand strong enough to feel comfortable. With over 130,000 euro on the table, it's now become a mental showdown where they're throwing in massive bets without much in the way of solid hands to back them up. No big draws, no monster hands, just pure poker instincts. He is reaching for a lot of chips. 70,000 euros, half the pot. He's got the best hand. His image has really been paying off. There's no flush draws. So both Hacks and Bozikowski really only beat straight draws from Tony G. But then again, Tony G's been betting random hands, so it could just be like a 5-4 offsuit. Hackson's going to fold one of them, but now it's on Bozikowski. A very weak pair. And a lot of tension going on. Tony G's actually quite silent in this hand. Might be going through Bodzikowski's mind. Wow. It is going to call here a third pair. 270,000 euros in the middle. Tony's opponent ultimately makes the call, clearly convinced that Tony's signature table chatter is covering up a bluff. He seems to think Tony's hand is as outlandish as his non-stop talking, but in this high stakes face-off, anything can happen when nerves and bluffs collide. Very last hand, and maybe Tony G is trying to make a play to kind of rub it in his face after. And Tony G is completely silent. Nikita beats Queen 10, Ace Queen, and pretty much just any random hands. 10 9 did get there. Does also beat Queen 9. But there's a lot of hands that beat him. Any King, Makita reaching for chips, raises to 400,000. Wow, what a sick play. Yeah. Can Tony G make the call here of just top pair, no kicker? Cool. Wow, he snap calls pretty much on the very last hand. I'm the best! The best! Yes! The best! Tony G is known for being brash, but one thing's for sure, he knows how to back up his talk. In this 1 million euro pot, Tony reads the situation perfectly, calling with just top pair and proving his poker instincts are as sharp as ever. Badziakuski, on the other hand, is left licking his wounds after his bluff gets brutally exposed. In the end, Tony's mouth may be loud, but his poker skills speak even louder. Setting a trap in the Heartland. Next, we head to the Heartland Poker Tour final table, where Bruce and Vu are locked in a battle for tournament glory. Bruce flops a monster hand, but instead of charging ahead, he opts for a more cunning strategy. In poker, sometimes the best move is to play it slow, and when your opponent can't resist taking the bait, that's when the real magic happens. He might be committed to calling Daryl's stack, but it looks like he wants to 3-bet here instead of just call. He is going to opt to just call here. And that's going to invite okay, Daryl into the pot. Pop's going to fold. Can't steal my line. And the flop is eight, queen, five, all clubs, which means Bruce has flopped a flush, the second nut flush, in fact. And I don't see this hand going on much further past this flop as Vu only has second pair, no club, and Daryl has nothing. Unfortunately for Bruce, not a lot for the other players to play with. Everyone's gonna check around. Bruce is gonna slow play and Bruce chooses the artful route, executing a well-timed check despite holding an overwhelmingly strong hand with a 97% chance of winning. The real question now is how much he can squeeze out of Vu, who's unaware of the trouble he's walking into. Just check behind. 
turn is the three of clubs, and this is why I don't really like slow playing flop flushes multi-way, because although it looks like Boo's gonna lead into Bruce here, he's a little bit handcuffed now because he's afraid of the ace of clubs, and he's not gonna get much value because once Bruce calls Boo's bet, Boo might not fire again on the river. 265. And Daryl is gonna get out of the way. We're on to Bruce now. Of course, Bruce checking the flop kind of conceals it. He flopped the flush here, so he got a little bit of action. He does because Vu decided to try to bluff in this spot, but at the same time, if anybody else had another club out there on the flop, they might have come along from the flop bed. Sure. River is a jack of spades, insignificant jack of spades. Bruce with the second nuts here. Probably isn't going to go anywhere, no matter what Vu bets. The trap is perfectly set. Vu holding nothing more than a pair of eights is about to make a move. Bruce's calculated patience has put him in the perfect position. And now it's just a matter of how big this pot is going to grow. And I agree with my co-host to the left here. The action is probably done in this hand. But as it's been proven many, many times over the years on the HPT, I am again wrong. And he is going to fire 390,000 on the river here. What's he trying to do with that bet, Maria? I think he's trying to get Bruce off of like a seven of clubs or a nine of clubs here. But unfortunately for him, Bruce has the second nut flush and he is going to call. That bet size just wouldn't do it for what Bruce has. And Unfortunately for Vu, this was the wrong moment to bluff. Bruce barely needs to think it over as he snaps up the pot with ease. His smart, patient play puts him one step closer to taking home the title. And we have to admit, it was a beautifully executed hand from start to finish. In poker, as Bruce demonstrates, sometimes the most powerful move is letting your opponent dig their own grave. It's hard to bluff the nuts. Our final clip tournament poker takes center stage as Dan squares off against John. It's a high pressure environment where a single misstep can cost you everything. And when one player lands the nuts, the outcome becomes nothing short of spectacular. Yeah, it's shallow enough that honestly. Uh, it literally takes two hands and yeah. Dan wins. Yep. Okay. Puffy, come out. It's the viewers get to see a floppy. Yeah. Which is nice. Ooh. Trick. Interesting. Yep. Flop. Yep. Top pair and a straight draw. Ooh. A second jack. Yeah, John with not real showdown value with eight high. 225. Has fold equity and has equity against a seven or a six yep. and a jack. Gonna go with the call, a little sneaky. Uh, although, <laughs> with the pot nearing a staggering one million chips, John's odds take a hit when the jack pairs the board on the turn, weakening his draw. Meanwhile, Dan is faced with a decision: will he charge John to chase his straight, or will he lay a trap? If the straight gets there, this could get. Wow. Dan right. Sprack would be absolute right. nuts. Be nuts. I, I like the now. way Dan has played this. 9.30 out there. Oh, and it goes. Yep. And we have a Dan new hit. chip well, like, leader. Oh, nice. Nice hand. Yeah, that was well, well played. checked as well on the, in the end. Nice hand. Nice hand. How much is it? Oh, yeah. Let's go. That what was, hand? Wow. Now they're exactly okay. even. Okay. <laughs> Dan Sprague. Cool on the gaining. Turn. Yeah, I Check really liked lead. his call in the turn. Five. Good. John plays it to perfection, extracting the maximum value from the hand. It's every poker player's dream, your opponent going all in when you're holding an unbeatable hand. As John scoops the pot, it's a reminder of how quickly fortunes can change in tournament poker. Thanks for watching, and to stay up to date with the most epic poker fails, sickest suckouts, and legendary hands, make sure to like and subscribe.